Well, thank you so much for sitting down and talking with me today. I've been really looking forward to hearing more of your story. So with that being said, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you? Sure. Uh, my name is Michael, Michael Dada, and I'm new to Nashville, been in Nashville for about a couple of years, maybe two years. Um, I work in corporate America and a fun little fact, I wasn't born here in the States. I was born in Nigeria. So I have a different understanding and have different, you know, background than most people do. How long and have you been here in the States? I came to the States when I was about three years old. So I went to school here, did college here, but I also went back and did a bit of middle school slash high school when I was, uh, after my seventh grade, I went back and, and did some high school there and I came back to the States. All right. So yeah. how long have you been in corporate America? Been in corporate America for a long time now. Um, eight, eight plus years. Okay. Yeah. What has your experience been as a black man in corporate America? I've had, uh, I've had different types of experiences. It's been um, a breath of different things. So to start off with, um, being a black man in corporate America brings you with new challenges. So one of those are you're in a world that sometimes you're not used to because you grew up in a different environment. And growing up, I, we've, being from Nigeria, you faced like three different dynamics. One, that you're Nigerian, and, but people expect you to be a certain, you know, I'm under a certain culture. So they see you, oh, you're black. But hey, I'm Nigerian. We have a different culture, a different dynamic. And then, hey, you grew up in certain environments and they expect you to, you know, think and act a certain way, but you don't act and think a certain way. So when you get to the corporate America, corporate America setting, you're coming with all these experiences and all these, um, I guess, background. And then you get into this environment and you have to, you find out there's pretty much a singular way of doing things and a singular way of thinking. Everybody's on the same page and just a choice you have to make either you stay with your identity that you've come with or you blend in um, to succeed and also to go up within the ranks. And that's just part of how corporate America is. It gives you the opportunity and, and this is plus and minus that gives you the opportunity to, you know, to learn about new cultures, but also to find out what works within the system that you live in. Mm. Yeah. Wow. So building on that, what are some assumptions that have been made about you based on your skin color or how people perceive you because you are from Nigeria. Can you give us some examples of that? So assumptions made about me, um, and it could be from different people, is, hey, you're Nigerian. I've heard about um, scams that Nigerians do. I was like, oh, wow, interesting. So he's like, I'm a, people make these jokes. I'm a prince from Nigeria. I was like, are you? That's great to hear, you know? <laughs> for me, this, it's no sort off my back. Right. And the reason for that is because we've, you've, when you grew up in America, it's funny, like now in America, uh, being African is almost like cool, you know, it's mm -hmm. like being accepted. Mm -hmm. Growing up here, it was not like that at all. You were, you were beat up <laughs> and you weren't beat up by, you know, white people. You're beat up by black people because you were, you know, treated in that way. So um, some of those are, you know, part of the assumption like, hey, you're, you're, you're African. Ah, nothing good, nothing mm -hmm. good comes from there. Mm -hmm. Another part is, hey, you speak and you, you talk in a certain way. Where are you from? You know, where'd you go to school? Why is that important? <laughs> Where'd you go to school? <laughs> Where are you from? Yeah. You know, that kind of yeah. question. So, yeah. you know, some of those questions, yeah, when I was growing up, it's like, oh, that's nice. I speak good. Oh, great. But as you grow up, you start to understand, like, you want to ask me that question because, hey, I did something good. You asked me that question because I was a contrast to your assumption. Mm. And you wanted to find a reason or justification for why that was. Wow. So when you ask me that question, hey, where'd you go to school? You speak well, you know, it's like, don't we all supposed to speak well? Aren't we all in the mm -hmm. same boat? Um, and so there's, those are some of the assumptions that are, are, were made. What are some things that you feel like you have to be conscious of when you're out in public based on the color of your skin or how people perceive, as we've talked about, mm -hmm. you um, to act or should act? What are some of those things? That's, that's, a, that's a good question. I'll tell you that because as a black man in America, and I, and I hate using that word black man, but it's just as a man in America, um, and based on how I'm perceived, everything matters. So how I dress, how I speak, you know, what I do. There's some things that even that no, other people would do. But if I do it, it'd be like, why are you doing that? It's mm -hmm. almost like you don't have the right to do it. Mm -hmm. Or I can give a pass to this person, but to you, nah, you, you, mm -hmm. no pass for you. And so how I dress uh, is, you know, cognizant of, okay, how would I be treated? So sometimes, you know, if I wear a hoodie or if I wear, I'm not, I, I never wore baggy clothes. So it was, this, right. it was right. never a thing for me in the first place. But I do see friends who, you know, wear, you know, 
certain clothes and they're treated a different way. And if you see what their like their salaries are like, dude, they're making a lot of money. But at the same time, when you look at when you look at what's going on, you realize, hey, when you look at what's going on, you realize, hey, these people are being treated a different way because of how they're perceived. And that's some that's sometimes how we as human beings are bred. I can't say from a from you know it's a racial thing, but I think we all grew up with certain conditions and we live those conditions as we grow. And, and yeah. that just is, again, those stereotypes that yeah. really we all have yeah. um, about people who are different from us and cultures that are different from us, right? Yeah. We start thinking that they should act a certain way or mm-hmm. do a certain thing. And when they don't, it's almost like we don't know what to do with that. We don't know how to accept them for them. A lot of times we... Especially if you grew up in America, you you grew up with, and you're taught in our educational system. You're taught um, t- certain beliefs, and you don't know you're taught those until you start to grow. That's right. And those beliefs start to play out in your life. And even for me, I'm not gonna lie to you. There's some beliefs that I have within even my personal self that I've had to weed out, mm-hmm. and they haven't been positive to Black people or to some races. And I'm being honest with you. Yeah. And I sit back and I think, okay, what made me think that? I mean, my parents didn't teach me that. Mm. Then I look back at school and I realized, oh, we were taught this about ourselves. We were taught this about our history. We were taught this about, you know, this is what you guys do. And so then it makes me think, huh, I have taught this about myself. And then I carry that same belief and I pour that belief in other people too as well. Mm. So I'm now the problem. Right. And then I have to look at myself and say, wow, I am the problem. And so I have to look and say, how do I become a solution? Yeah, I love yeah. that. What, what do you wish people would see when they look at you? I think it's very basic. I wish people would see a human being. I, I'm, I can't dis- prescribe to you how people should see every man or every woman. Mm-hmm. But I can just tell you, look at, look at me as a regular human being. Mm-hmm. Look at me how you see yourself. In our country, things were justified for so long. Mm-hmm. Um, either that could be slavery. And, and back then, it's like, oh, yeah, you know, we brought them from wherever they were, and we've given them, a, say, we've taught them a new culture. Mm-hmm. We've you know, made them better or given them Christianity or whatever it is, mm-hmm. and we've made them better, and now this is just you know, part of it. We found a justification, and now the, it helped the people accept it as normal. Mm-hmm. Um, and honestly, I, am part of that, I was part of that problem, and I've chosen to be a solution. I love it. Um, so it, it takes work. <laughs> And Every sometimes day. it's humbling because as you go, you know, through life, you see some people and, you know, we have certain different biases too as well that are at play and we don't know them. And then we, sometimes the best way to learn is when it's turned on you. Mm. When people turn that bias on you and I, I'm like, wow, why'd you do that? Why'd you think of me like that? And I look and I'm like, oh, I, th- I thought somebody like that too as well. Yeah. And it helps you. It does time. help. And when we can, when we can see that in ourselves, and mm-hmm. I think that, um, not to get off into the white privilege, but I think a lot of people have misunderstood the term white privilege. Mm-hmm. I've had conversations with people and they've said, well, listen, I worked hard for everything I've ever gotten. I, I was poor growing up and mm-hmm. I have to stop and say white privilege is not about socioeconomic in this way, in yeah. what we're talking about. Yeah. White privilege means you don't have to worry about your skin color being the reason that you are stopped or or targeted or talked to a certain way. Mm -hmm. But if we can all stop and look at what privileges do we have within our own culture, within ourselves, whatever it may be, and then look at someone else and figure out, okay, how can I better understand where they are when I can stop and say, you know, I don't have to worry about A, B, or C. Mm -hmm. Um, And for right now in this time that our country is in, it really is about the white cult, the white pr- uh, privilege. Mm-hmm. And so how can we, how can we help our friends learn from that? And so I guess as you've had conversations with people about the things that are going on in the world right yeah. now, how have you, or, or what advice would you have for white people in how to have an uncomfortable conversation with a black man? One thing I'll say is if it's uncomfortable, have that conversation, but be open to learn. And, be, and when I say be open to learning, it's, it's going to be tough because, first of all, you're coming, you're talking to somebody. I imagine this, right? You're having an argument with somebody and someone gets punched, right? The person who punched the other person walks and goes away. They've forgotten about the punch. Mm-hmm. But you who was hurt 
still feels the pain. It's been maybe a minute. You still feel the pain. It's been an hour. You still feel the pain. It's been a whole day. You still feel the pain. That person, they're gone off their lives. Mm -hmm. So I think from, from that point of view, you should come to the point and say, hey, these people have been hurt. Understand that. But don't be a person to like ignore the pain and say, oh, it happened so long ago. Oh, you should forget it. Oh, it's, it's not only you. Right. But hey, I'm still feeling the impact from that. Mm -hmm. You know, you've hurt me or not, not you necessarily, but I've been hurt mm -hmm. and the pain is deep. And so I want to have a conversation with you so, so you can understand my pain, understand what I'm going through so that, hey, we're able to work together. So you can see things that you do that continue that hurt and so that you can adjust those. Because, mm -hmm. hey, when I come to you, I find ways to adjust myself, my culture mm -hmm. to, to you know, work well with you. And I, I believe that same so when you're uncomfortable, be willing to stay in the uncomfortableness. Yes. Because yeah. I think that's where progress comes from. So um, let's segue into something that I know you're really excited about. Okay. You have just recently become a dad. Yes, I have. And I you have. have an amazingly adorable son. <laughs> I'm grateful. Uh, oh, he is, <laughs> he is the best. Um, what kinds of things do you feel like you're going to have to teach him mm -hmm. as he grows as a black man in this world? It's a very good question. I thought about that, and I thought about that deeply. And I and how I got to that was thinking about myself. How did I grow up in this world? Um, I told you earlier, I'm from Nigeria, so coming here uh, was a different dynamic. Uh, most of my life, so I had I had an interesting dynamic here, growing up in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, in my early days. It's a different dynamic from you know when we lived in um, the D.C. area. So it's two different worlds, mm -hmm. and so one world. In Atlanta, Georgia, it was like pretty much for the first year we were there, 98% of the people I went to school with were all white. Oh, Next wow. year, it was flipped. 98% were all black. And then we didn't stay there much longer. <laughs> but it was a different dynamic entirely. So, and then coming here to, you know, come to D.C. area, it was the same deal. Like most of the people I went to school with were white. So I look at the world from a different lens where I say, okay, being in that world, what are some things I would have done differently? So for me, I would tell my son, say, hey, be open to learn and understand who you are, first of all. Because, hey, in this world, you're going to face people from different cultures, different backgrounds, different experiences. But if you don't know who you are, you'll be swept up and carried away. And in that sweeping away, you lose yourself. Oh, so for so me, I, I want him to know who he is, his identity, where he's from, his own history. And I'm grateful that I have um, a strong history, a strong cultural background, um, still tied to Nigeria, so tied to our culture and, you know, how we do things, even the food. Mm -hmm. Food is so important. Yes. It's very food important. Food is very important. Because if you smell certain types of food, it just brings back <laughs> so many memories. Yes. Um, yes. And so those are very important things for me to teach him. And then from there, once he knows himself, mm -hmm. he's able to be able to, ex to understand what he's going to accept mm -hmm. and what he's going to reject. And those are part of that principle. So being able to teach him some certain principles in life, mm -hmm. and I think those will be his guiding light. Um, as we kind of, I guess, end our time together, what would be the message that you would want to deliver in terms of how you think change can occur moving forward? The, the number one message I'll say is that change is not pretty. Uh, it's, it's pretty ugly. And the reason for that is because it, it, it turns a mirror on yourself and it says, hey, these are things that I can improve on. A lot of times people don't want to look at themselves. Think about in different settings, we are quick to point out wrongs on other people, mm -hmm. but we don't like to point out wrongs on ourselves. Right. Uh, so that's, how, that's what change does in this environment where you have to change your mindset. And a lot of those mindsets are, are deep. Those are, psych those, are, those are deep thoughts. When I say deep thoughts, that means like you're taught this from your childhood mm -hmm. and everything you've done ever since is built on this. Right. So if you remove that, in a sense that person is kind of like lost because everything they've done is based on these beliefs. So what I'll say is like, be willing to accept that change. We all are in a situation where we want to see a change happen. Right. And we want that to happen like yesterday. <laughs> but if we want to see that change happen, we need to access and look at ourselves and say, what can I do to change? Michael, thank you so much for spending time with us today, sharing your heart, giving us um, ways to be part of the solution. We really, really appreciate it. You're most welcome.